this video I'm going to take a look at how to create configurations that are table driven from a part so that a single file can contain multiple variations of the same kind of part. We have a metric nut here. Nut has a cosmetic thread as you can see and I'm going to add that metric nut to a design table and then add a few other variations and then I'm going to show you how to probably in a later video how to create an additional configuration that would be a flange First you create a geometry, have it fully dimensioned. It's not a bad idea to go and rename the um, extrusions and extrusion cuts so that they have uh, names that make more sense. So I called thickness the name of the overall thickness extrusion. Chamfer is what I call the chamfer that goes on the upside of the uh, nut on the bottom side of the nut. And then inside there you've got uh, equations representing the dimensions. So if I pick a dimension here 32 for instance. You notice it's got minor diameter at sketch 1 so that I can tell that it's the minor diameter of the nut. Um, and that's not quite all I need. I also needed to uh, know what the uh, thickness of the nut was. So that's the 55 right here and that's called flats at sketch 1. So those were just um, examples of renaming for the sake of making it a little bit clearer. And to do that, you simply find the dimension and select it and go over under primary value and just change whatever you want about that. I could also have changed the name of this Sketch 1 and called it something else rather than Sketch 1. Um, I could call it Base Sketch, for instance. So now it's going to have a name for that dimension, which is going to be Minor Diameter at Base Sketch. Come out of here. So now in order to just start with the design table, I'm going to go to Insert, Tables, Design Table. It's going to give me an option of creating a blank table and then filling it in, bringing something in from a file, or auto-creating. I'm going to pick auto-create. gives me a chance to pick those dimensions to add to the table. When I pick those dimensions, hold down the Shift key to do it, or the Control key. Those are the four things that are coming in by default. They come in and you notice they leave me a little um, column I can use to put in something else. If I go down now and add a few different sizes, and we'll take a look at a spreadsheet. Here's a spreadsheet that shows some various sizes. So we'll go with the uh, M36 by 4. It's going to be 55 millimeters across the flats, 32 millimeter minor diameter, um, 32 on the thickness, and it's a 36 inch bolt. So what I'm going to do is just take that information and I'm going to put it into my other spreadsheet. So what I've done now is I have changed the default value from M from default to M36 by 4. I've also added in an M30 by 3 and a half. I Sorry. Okay, I added 46 as the distance across the flats for that one, made 27 the minor diameter, actually 26 and a half, made 26 and 0.7 the uh, thickness. The chamfer I'm going to leave blank. If I click out of here now, it tells me that it just created those two new configurations. I pick OK. I go to the configuration tab, and now the default is still listed, but the M30 by 3.5 is listed the M36. If I double click on this, it gets smaller. If I double click on this, it gets bigger. Now you notice when I make the smaller configuration, I have a cosmetic thread that is not changing in size, and that's because it was not included in the design table. So I'm going to include that in the design table, but the other thing I want to do is add a chamfer, and I want that chamfer to go down to the depth of the cosmetic thread. So the first thing I'm going to do right now is go back to features, I'm going to add a feature of a chamfer to that edge and to this one. Now I'm going to put a number in here, just a number one for right now. Then I'm going to modify this in the, um, in the design table. So right now I'm going to add two things to the design table, the cosmetic thread size and that chamfer size. So I'm going to go back to configurations on the tab up here, get out of the table and open it up right click on design table and I'm going to edit the table. Now it comes up and asks me do I want D2 at cosmetic thread? That's the diameter of the cosmetic thread because it has a cosmetic thread and I did change the name of it. 
it gives me the chance to add it. It doesn't include the chamfer right now. Sometimes that works, sometimes it gives you what you want, and sometimes it doesn't. I'm going to leave both of those right now. I'm going to leave both of those for right now and just say OK the way it is because I want to add that here. Now the problem I have right now is what I want to do is add a couple things. I don't, know, I don't remember what they're called. If I knew what they were called, I could type them in. If I could see them on the screen, I could select them. So I need to go back. And when I go back, I'm going to do a couple of things. One is I'm going to move this nut so it's panned over to the side a little bit like that. Then I'm going to go over and I'm going to right click on annotations and I'm going to say show feature dimensions. Now all the various feature dimensions are shown here including cosmetic thread which is right there and the chamfer which is right here. So I'm just going to drag that out a little bit. And what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to see both of those dimensions when I've got my design table. So I've got the 1 and I've got the 36 showing right now. Now I'm going to go back over to the design table. I'm going to right click edit table. Make my table a little bit smaller. Now in this category right here I'm going to double click on that and it adds D2 at cosmetic thread. In that table I'm going to double click on this and it adds D1 at chamfer 1 both of those now can be controlled by this design table. If I go back, D2 at cosmetic thread should be the major diameter of the threaded hole itself. So I'm going to change that to a 30. And up here where it says 1, I'm going to change that to an equation because what I really want is for that chamfer to be half the difference between the major diameter and the minor diameter divided by 2. So instead of putting the 1 in here, I'm going to go up into the equation window, type equals parenthesis G3. G3 is the name of that cell right there. So G3 minus, oh, I'm sorry, not G3, G uh, F3. F3 is the cell that has the major diameter minus C3, which is the cell that has a minor diameter, close it up with a parenthesis, the division symbol, and then 2, press enter. Now it tells me that that's a, a size of 2, which means I can now copy that, come down here, and I can paste that equation. So now I'm going to get a different value here, but it's still going to be the value that goes as deep as I want it to go. So I've added the cosmetic threads and then changed them to what they should be for size. And I've added that chamfer in there. If I click out now, go over and turn off all those dimensions, bring that up under my configurations tab when I go back and forth. Now both the chamfer and the cosmetic thread change size as I go. All I have to do now is go and take a look at the other sizes, add all these in, and now I've got a complete range of sizes on those threads. Uh, now I've got a different nut here. I've, well, actually it's the same nut, but I've eliminated all my design tables. All I have is an M04 by 0.7 nut here. There's no other configuration. The design table is gone. What I have done, though, is created some additional geometry for this, which at the moment is rolled back. What I did is first added an extrude on the bottom to build a flange, put another extrude to go up to encase that part, then I cut a hole down through that part, and then I put a fillet around the whole thing. So if we were to get rid of the lines, it looks like that. So we have a nut with a flange on it now. <clears throat> so now, if I roll this back to here, there's my basic nut. If I go over and say, there's my basic nut, M04 by 0.7. If I right click on that and say, add derived configuration. This has nothing to do with a table yet. And the configuration, I call that an M4 with flange. Now I have what's called a derived configuration. It's got a flange on it. This other one has no flange on it. And the only thing I have to do to determine what that looks like is to make it active, go back here and decide to roll back or not roll back um, the various features. So I'm going to leave that unrolled back. But at the same time, I'm going to leave this one in that state. So now I have a, a nut, an 04 with um, out a flange and an 04 with a flange. Now I'm going to go back up again and I'm going to insert a design table. This is my first design table here. I'm going to auto create it once again. It's going to pop up and you'll notice that it has got um, 
two things here. If I roll back, it's got the um, M.047 and the M4 with flange. And the difference between them, they have the same basic sizes. And the difference between them is going to be what is showing and what isn't showing. Okay, so now I have added another one over on the left-hand side. You'll see now I've got my configurations. I've got an M04 by 7 and my M04 by 7 with flange. I have to do one thing here. I've got to go back. I've got to roll this back. There we go. Okay, now, <clears throat> with a flange, without a flange. I get out of the M5, do the same thing, go and roll that back. Now I've got the M5 with a flange, without a flange. Now, what I'm going to do is add one more here, and I'll do the um, M6 by 1, go through the same steps that I went through before to create that. And I'm going to just do it by editing my table. Ask me if I want to add any of these things. If it does, I guess it's not going to. <clears throat> I'm just going to go over here and do an M6 by... one. That's my basic size. Distance across the flats. I'll fill all that stuff. Um, then I'll come back out. <clears throat> and I have an, a six. Double click on that. It gets like this. Now what I'm going to do is to add a configuration to that as well. Right click. Add derived configuration. M6 with flange. Now I've got the two make that one active, go back and then roll the flange back again. Come back out here with flange, without a flange, get smaller, with flange, get smaller, with flange. So you just need to make sure that when you uh, set these up that each of the configurations has the rollback status that it is you want. So now I've got these, I can continue on and do the rest. That's it for this video.